Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Sunday morning here in Australia and the markets continue to go down. Bitcoin is now into the $46,000 range. And look, tomorrow, uh, I'm assuming it's probably gonna go down a little bit lower because that will be Sunday time over in the States before Monday comes and hopefully the market picks up, but definitely down at the moment. Still above two trillion though, which is good, but down another 5.8% uh, total. Bitcoin dominance now into the 30, so 39.2. Ethereum's dropped a little bit though, it was 19, now it's 18.9. And gas prices have come way down, so everyone's kind of panicked uh, and you know not doing too much on the Ethereum network at the moment. And look, people are just selling in the end, panic selling. And I guess the question is, could this be the end of the market? That's my question for you today. Do you think that we've hit the top and that's it and we're going down. Because look, the markets have changed and this, in all fairness, could be the peak. There've, there's been people out there that have said they think Bitcoin will get to about $60,000 and that will be the peak. Maybe they're going to be proved right. We're just gonna have to wait and see. And in all fairness, you know, I don't think that's the case, but I'm not completely discounting it. You know, going from $3,800 up to $60,000, I mean, that's still one hell of a ride. For me, I'm not going to panic sell anything, though. If this is the bear market, if, you know, the one thing I learned from the 2017, uh, you know, bull market through the bear market was if you just hold, you're generally going to do all right. Generally, if you're in good projects, the next time the bull market comes around, those things will generally reach all-time highs again, but not always. Look, that's again, that's never financial advice, but for me to just simply panic sell, that's something I'm not going to do. And I'm not going to sell something uh, for a big loss either. You know, I'm a bit stubborn like that. I'll just literally hold through and, you know, I may not make all my money back on some of those things, but on most of them, again, based on history, they're probably going to do all right anyway. So for me, I don't think it's the top of the market I think this is just going to be a bit of a sell-off and when we get to the charts again I'm gonna have a look at the 100 day 200 day and all the rest of it and you know we'll go over my thesis but if you've been watching my videos for the last little while you know what my thesis is anyway all right let's have a look has anything done really well in the last 24 hours because it looks like it's been pretty brutal I mean we can see polka dots been uh, doing all right for seven days but most things uh, you know XRP's up uh, and Cardano's up, but in the last 24 hours, it hasn't looked very good, particularly the last seven days. Right, Harmony's still making a move. Uh, Leo token, Polygon continues to go. It was a little bit higher. I think this got up to around about a dollar sort of 67. Cardano, $2.17. I mean, that has performed unbelievably well. XRP, look, there's a couple of all right gains there. Nothing too crazy, except for really Harmony. Other than that, you know, pretty stock standard. But look, then we're into the US sort of dollar coins and things like that, where there was a few gains. Look, a gain's a gain, you'll take it, but there hasn't been too much. And again, overall, the market's down 5.8%. So what's been knocked around? Because I'm going to say most things have been knocked around. All right, so gate token, 17%. Telecoin, Shiba Inu. Who would have thought, eh, that that was going to go down? Yearn Finance, Uma, Nano, Aave taking a bit of a beating there but I mean still up 10.3 percent for the week so you know not too bad sushi nexo look again pretty much everything and double digit losses pirate chain far out so the market yep taking a bit of a turn but we're waiting for you know again was that the weekend retracement have we hit the bottom that really is the question that we're all waiting for and you know we'll get to the charts and have a look so here it is, Bitcoin chart. I've put back in the 100 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. So we can see the 200 day moving average is starting to move up to this green box. And look where the Bitcoin price is bouncing almost perfectly, right on this green box. So holding that kind of $46,000 range. We've wicked down into it, uh, but then it's just you know holding as support. The big question is, will it hold as support? Look, there's you know, all this Elon FUD and everyone's really worried about the greenhouse emissions and all the rest of it. But I, th I read something yesterday, 75% of Bitcoin is mined through green power. 
So almost all of it. So there's only some grit uh, Bitcoin that is mined off like fossil fuels and that. So, you know, that whole thing that Elon put out about, you know, he's not going to accept Bitcoin because it uses fossil fuels. Tesla is using fossil fuels to build those cars. <laughs> that's yeah, th So that's the ironic thing. Do we all now say, right, oh, we're not going to buy Tesla because they have uh, a carbon footprint? Of course not. Everything has a carbon footprint. We have a carbon footprint. We produce carbon monoxide when we're breathing and all sorts of stuff. But, you know, the plants absorb carbon monoxide. I don't know if it's carbon monoxide, but uh, carbon dioxide. Sorry, not monoxide. That's the, the bad stuff. Carbon dioxide. Uh, and, you know, uh, then they turn that into oxygen. You know, animals uh, are part of the greenhouse effect and particularly you know farming like pigs and cows and things like that so everything has a carbon footprint i 100 percent behind you know being as green as we possibly can but i don't think we can become 100 percent green i just there's i don't know if there's a way to do that uh full stop there's always going to be some kind of footprint you know to build houses we have to cut down trees or we've got to use metal they're going a lot more towards wood these days because we can keep replacing wood metal it's being taken out of the ground and once it's gone you know the iron ore and things like that it, that doesn't get replaced uh very quickly so yeah it, it's a funny time at the moment because everyone's just freaked out about this tweet and yeah here comes the market going down but what we can see is we are in a clean a clear downtrend at the moment so really what we can do is we could probably put a line in from here and this is kind of where we're sort of heading at the moment you can see it's got a little bit of support there well not support because that's not what it is but this is where we're currently heading And it does look like this is getting wider and wider. So the volatility is probably going to come down into sort of somewhere in and around about here. And I think this 200 day moving average starts to come up. And so, you know, this is just a very rough guess, but I'm going to say somewhere by around about the end of this month, we should see exactly where we're heading. Do we continue to go lower? Because I'll be real surprised if we can break through uh, this green box here and continue to go lower. Because I think this 200 day moving average is very closely, uh, very soon, sorry I should say, going to reach this green box. And that's really where I think we're going to find support. We're going to bounce off the 200 day moving average and then make our next move up. But look, again, maybe this market is different. This doesn't look like a top because we travelled sideways for so long. This does just look more like accumulation before everything gets ready to explode and moves to the upside. So again, at the moment, Bitcoin is tipping that box where I think it's a pretty good buy. Anything inside this green box I think is a pretty good buy, but that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. And it does look like this 200 day moving average, look within the next couple of weeks, is going to reach this green box. So we drag that out to about there. I think, you know, it's probably almost perfectly with this line it looks like so i'm going to say by about the 23rd of may is when we should see the 200 day moving average at around about forty one thousand dollars and i wouldn't be surprised if bitcoin doesn't find support off there and then basically rocket up to the upside but there's no guarantees in life again the question for today is do you think this is it do you think the run is over that now we're going to go into the next bear market that will be very, very interesting. What I think is going to happen is another stimulus uh, bill is going to come out somewhere and that is then going to be the spark for the next move up. But, you know, maybe not. I'm not. I'm definitely not uh, an oracle who knows all. That is just my gut feeling. All right, this is going to be a quick one today because there's not really a lot of information happening on the weekends. All right, so moving on to the news stories. Nearly 50 million Americans own Bitcoin, says NYDIG, or they estimate. Most Americans would change banks if their primary one doesn't add Bitcoin-related products and services, reveals a recent poll. A survey compiled by the New York Digital Investment Group, or NYDIG, or New, yeah, New York DIG, whatever you want to call it, estimated nearly 50 million of Americans are currently on Bitcoin. Interestingly, the majority of poll participants also noted they would store their digital tokens at banks if they had such services. And we've already had stories about banks doing that. 
and soon they're going to follow suit. And once banks hold cryptocurrencies, you're going to see that explosion. It's really going to grow because a lot of people at the moment, you know, they're untrusting of cryptocurrencies. And that's the truth. A lot of people really are. And particularly with the price coming down now, you can see the stories and people are going, I knew it, it's all dodgy and it's fake and it's this and that. And as long as Bitcoin can just kind of hold and keep ranging and particularly stay above the 200 day moving average, I'm not too worried at all. And these new people, they don't want to go to these exchanges because they're worried about passwords and this and that. The minute, and I mean it, the minute their bank starts to offer it, all of a sudden it's going to become more legit and they're going to go, I thought this stuff was dodgy, but now my bank's offering me the opportunity to buy it and they're going to hold it. Maybe this isn't dodgy and this is super simple. I don't have to go join like a, you know, a, an exchange which is like joining a new bank. I can just do this through my bank where it's fully protected and regulated and all the rest of it. That is what I think is going to happen and that's going to be the catalyst that pushes this really, really high. Not sure that's going to come in this bull run. It still might be another bull run away, but that is what I think is coming. All right, Bitcoin still on track to uh, get to 100k uh, says Lynn Alden so she's uh, you know regarded as a pretty smart smart analyst in you know the world of finances in general and investing in that and she says she thinks it still gets to 100k so that is double the price that it is right now so again the market cap let's go to the overall market cap 2.2 trillion dollars Oof, we're at 2.251, so we've lost uh, $10 billion right there. So market's still going down. But $2.2 trillion, that says that this market gets to over $5 trillion by the end of this bull market. And that's just on Bitcoin doubling. So again, this will probably be a little bit more than that. If Bitcoin were to double in price, get to 100000 a lot of these other coins would have done extremely better. But here's the point I'm making, you know, Bitcoin down 5% 5 in 24 hours and look how everyone else is doing. So let's get 5%. Let's see where Bitcoin fits in. So there we go. Bitcoin 5%. There was a ton of things that were above it. And there's only a few things that have fared uh, not as bad as Bitcoin before we start to get into some of the gains. So Bitcoin, not the most explosive but also takes the least amount of damage. But very, very interesting if Bitcoin can still get to 100K. And, you know, it'll be very, very interesting to see if Bitcoin can get to, you know, Plan B's 288K and other people who've said, you know, even higher prices. Yeah, for me, I think 100, 150K at the moment is where we're kind of looking roughly. I think there's going to be major selling if Bitcoin gets to 100K. Major selling. And I am somewhat... Not skeptical, but just unsure if Bitcoin can get to these prices, you know, that people are talking about 150, 200, 300, 400k in this bull run. Look, I'd be happy to be proven wrong, uh, and around about 100k, I'm probably happy to sell a little bit of Bitcoin. I won't be selling like major amounts or anything like that. Uh, really, for me to sell, you know, a substantial amount of my Bitcoin, I am waiting for that kind of two, three, four hundred thousand dollar range. Uh, if it's not getting to that, I'm happy to just hold. And that includes through a bear market, you know, watch my Bitcoin drop by 50, 60 percent. That's fine because the prices I bought it at, which was around about eight thousand sort of four hundred ish, I got some cheaper and I bought some for more expensive, but that's my average buying price. I don't think Bitcoin will ever get down there again. And if it does, guess what I'll be doing? Buying a whole lot more. All right, crypto custodian Anchorage. So Anchorage Digital, they are investing into more DeFi coins. So now they've uh, moved into one inch uh, BNT. I'm not sure what that is. Curve Finance, Ren and Sushi. What is that? Is that Bancor or something? Uh, Sushi Swap, uh, DeFi tokens, one inch. Oh, I think one inch is BN. No, that is Bancor. Yep, there we go. So Bancor, Curve Finance, Ren. I'm glad I own some Ren uh, and Sushi Swap. So they are one of the uh, crypto sort of uh, exchanges that were given a banking license, and so they have gone really, really heavy into the whole DeFi space. And if we go over to their page, we can see the assets that they've supported. And look, a lot of it 
uh, is exactly what you would think. You know, DeFi projects, Aave, Aragon, Argo, Balancer, Bitcoin, Cosmos, Compound, Chainlink, Celo, Bitcoin Cash, Dai, Decentraland, Ethereum, Filecoin, Foam, uh, INX token. So as you can see, tons, you know, Synthetics, Stellar, Maker, Litecoin, Amise Go. So that's a layer two sort of network. Sushi Swap, uh, Yearn Finance, Wrapped Bitcoin, 0x. So they are now adding even more coins. And that is why I am super bullish on the DeFi platforms. They, they are going to have their moment where they really will become the future of banking. That, that's my personal opinion. Things like Aave, Synthetics, uh, I am super bullish on. And look, I've bought some Synthetics uh, for a while now uh, and it hasn't made me any money. I think it's kind of peaked out for now, but I do think there's another run coming and it is going to get quite big. And I, again, I'm not sure if it's going to be this time, but I think the following bull run is probably when that mass adoption really starts to happen and all the really, really big companies are starting to use these uh, DeFi platforms and programs. That's my belief anyway. All right, again, the question for today is, do you think this is it? Have we hit the top? Was 60,000 the top? And are we now getting ready to see the next sort of bear market? Not a bit of a you know correction pullback, which we're having. Do you think we're getting ready for the next bear market? All right. If you enjoy my content, can you do me one favor before you go? Can I just get you to hit that like button? I really, really appreciate that. Appreciate that. Sorry, and subscribe uh, if you want to get uh, daily content from me because that's what I do: daily content. All right, that's it from me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. That's what I plan on doing. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train, congratulations to you. You've outperformed the market, and I'll see you next time.